Good evening and welcome to Overtime here on WOTM. I am Gerhard Mathangani. As promised, Mark was with us on Monday, back with us again here on a Wednesday. Lots of things to cover today. Some big news out of the college football world as it relates to a television partner. We'll get into that. Also some news in the baseball world. We'll also give a shout out to the Album High School Athletic Association and some high school news also as well. But we will start marking the NFL. Training camps have opened up for all 32 teams. Of course, the big storyline in the NFL really all offseason, for most of the offseason at least, has been Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers made his way back into camp but under a lot of stipulations. We talked about this the other day, about some of the things that he and the team were trying to do to be able to get back on the same page. He's back in Seven, on, eight, on eight, the, the facility and, and doing so with an organization that he's got to be kind of maybe, it's not a salty, but a, maybe a frosty relationship, especially with the general manager and up top. He spoke today about some of his concerns and some of the things that have maybe mold thought he could retire and some of the things that went on with him and the organization with a lengthy press conference today, about a 31-minute press conference today, kind of highlighting everything. And it's been a needed thing because we hadn't heard from him as much over the last uh, about few months or so. We've been hearing from his friends and whatnot. What did you make of, of Aaron Rodgers, his decision to come back, and some of the things that we've seen so far from number 20? Well, I think what you see from Rodgers and what you hear from Rodgers is what he's been saying all along, yeah. is that he feels like he's been underappreciated. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a guy since 2011 has 325 touchdowns and just 57 interceptions. Right. That is absolutely insane mm -hmm. for an NFL quarterback, a guy that competes for a living. The way he's dominated the quarterback position is second to only Brady over that time period. Right. Uh, those numbers over that tenure period are better than Peyton Manning's or better than John Elway, better than Dan Marino, better than just about any quarterback in the league except for Brady. Uh, his one thing that he doesn't have going for him is he only won that one Super Bowl. And I think that's what he's trying to tell Green Bay. Yeah. As you've seen in some of these postseason games, him pulling out games with – uh, Hail Mary passes, and I remember beating the Lions in a Hail Mary pass on a regular season game that helped get them to the playoffs one year. He's done a lot of things individually. He doesn't feel like he's getting the support from the organization overall, whether it was Ted, Th Ted Thompson or whether it's the GM and the coach now, uh, going back all the way back to 2010. Because the guys he mentioned in his press conference that he feels the organization has not appreciated, uh, you know, going back to Charles Woodson, I mean, th those are guys that uh, some of them are, you know, which one was, should be a Hall of Famer. I right. mean, guys that deserve uh, that kind of respect. So I think he has some legitimate complaints. Uh, but overall, uh, when you look at what he's done, I think that he's in a position of power here for Green Bay. Uh, and they really have to give him what, what he's asking for. And if they can, I think that things will work out a lot better for them. If they break right now and he leaves... Uh, and they feel like, well, we missed an opportunity with Rodgers to win again, and then now he feels also underappreciated. That's not going to be good for anybody. So I really would like to see them get this rectified. Exactly. It, was, it is good that he's back in camp. I think it's great, great for the NFL that the MVP did not retire. He talked about some of his concerns overall and what led to those concerns in the offseason, and he said that he thought about retirement seriously. We cut a little bit of his 31-minute press conference, and here's what he had to say about – what, the, what he thought, and then how the team responded. And I just expressed, you know, my desire to be uh, more involved in conversations that directly affected my job. Um, also, uh, I wanted to help the organization maybe learn from them some of the mistakes in the past, in my opinion, about the way that some of the uh, outgoing veterans were treated, um, and just the fact that we didn't retain uh, a number of uh, players that I felt like were core players to our foundation, our locker room, high character guy. And then it kind of progressed from there into a commitment for the 2021 season and beyond. Uh, that really wasn't uh, given at any time. So for me, I had to assess the situation, not necessarily wanting to be a lame duck quarterback, especially after an MVP season, which I think you can understand. Um, and then the other part uh, in, in February was wanting to be a part of conversations involving free agents, uh, which has never happened in my career. 
one of the big things about Aaron Rodgers coming off an MVP season, and I know obviously, obviously uh, 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 you're great with the stats. He's also been really, really important in one aspect over his entire career. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, looking at NFL history, he's the only guy to have 300 touchdowns and under 100 interceptions. There's only one of the player that has 200 touchdowns and under 100 interceptions, right. and that's Russell Wilson. Yeah. So he has been very good at his job. Exactly, for a very long time as well. We'll stay in the NFL now. Obviously, vaccines have been really the, the top of the news items as far as you turn it to any news outlet, whether it's CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, and everybody else. But then also it's making its way into the sports world as well. We saw it at the Tokyo Olympics. We're also seeing it now in the NFL. The NFL did put out a memo to NFL teams about some of the restrictions for players who are not vaccinated. We'll take a look at those restrictions and the protocol as it relates to players who are, who are not vaccinated right now. They have to wear a mask at all times, including inside the weight room. Also, there are fines involved. If you refuse to submit to virus testing, it's $50,000 per refusal. And they have to uh, virus test to be virus tested every day, non-vaccinated players. Also, you have to wear a tracking device when you're in the facility. The fine for that is just over $14,000. There's travel restrictions. Also, you're banned from things like bars and nightclubs, sporting events, and concerts. Also, if a game cannot be rescheduled because of an unvaccinated player, the infected team has to forfeit, and everybody on the infected team does not get their game check. So they're really making life difficult for players that aren't vaccinated. What were some of your, um, your thoughts about how the NFL is kind of handling this thing as, the, as everybody tries to handle uh, the, the vaccination process versus the, those who are not vaccinated? Overall, I think as a nation, we're facing this you know, complex issue. Uh, do you uh, make it mandatory for vaccinations? Obviously, you can't come out and say that they're mandatory because people w won't like to hear that. Right. But essentially, this makes it mandatory. Yeah. I mean, this makes you probably the most unpopular player in the locker room if you are going to limit yourself to this when you're playing in NFL uh, for an NFL team. I don't think any player would want to be restricted to those things. And then if something goes wrong, oh, let's blame the unvaccinated player. Right. And I think overall you see that going on in society where people now, if they didn't intend to be vaccinated, are being forced to be vaccinated socially because they're being alienated by either their job or their family or whatever. And so I think that this – how I feel about it is really weird. I've been vaccinated, and I think everybody should be vaccinated. But uh, I, to, to make that mandatory or you face you know, punishment, I don't like that either. Exactly. It should be worth noting about 85% of NFL players as of right now are vaccinated. We've got a couple of guys that have been really, really vocal about the vaccinations over the last few weeks. Here's a couple of them talking about their stance right now. I wanted to start this off by saying I'm not anti or pro-vax. I'm pro-choice. With that being said, the issue at hand is information is being withheld from players in order for a player to be swayed in a direction he may not be comfortable with. Mm -hmm. When dealing with a player's health and safety, there should be complete transparency regarding information that is vital in the decision-making process. Without having all the proper information, a player can feel misguided and unsure about a very personal choice. It makes a player feel unprotected and gives concerns about future topics regarding health and our ability to make educated decisions. Every doctor I've gone to with questions begins every sentence with from what we know now, which tells me we don't know enough. The NFLPA is working to have vaccinated players tested more frequently than what the NFL initially stated. Um, a lot of players got the vaccination with the idea that these rules were already set in stone and they're not. Almost everybody's either been vaccinated or, or in process. Uh, I'm currently in process right now, so um, that's where it's at. But uh, yeah, I think uh, the NFL has kind of made it clear what they want to happen. and. Uh, if you don't fall in line, they're kind of try to make your life kind of miserable with all the protocols. So um, I think you're seeing the trend is that most guys are, are getting vaccinated. See where the NFL goes from this, but you, you heard two, two of the kind of vocal guys, and, and I know you thought that Beasley's making some good points. It kind of uh, kind of aligning where, where you stand right now, and then obviously uh, Tannehill on the other side saying kind of if, if you don't get vaccinated, the NFL's not going to make your life really easy uh, moving forward. Well, moving forward here on this program, we'll talk – some news out of the NCAA, some really big and important news, and also some news from Reggie Bush and a former high school star on the move in baseball. We'll talk about it coming up next.